Here's a quick tour of the uh, setup I'm using to raise the baby uh, clownfish. So we got two 10 gallon tanks, two lights from Home Depot, just the clip on construction lights, like eight bucks a piece. I put LED light bulbs in there, which are like 20 something bucks a piece, but they really cut down on the algae and uh, more energy efficient, etc., all that kind of stuff. Uh, four way air pump at Petco or from Petco, 20 bucks, 24 bucks, something like that. I got two one liter bottles that I'm using for brine shrimp. Uh, pretty much free, drink the water and add an airline tube in the top. I covered them with just some styrofoam so it keep the bubbles from, from splashing out over the lights. Put two little lights behind them just for some heat and uh, a place for the baby brown shrimp to congregate when you take the uh, airline out. They will go to the light so it makes them easier to collect and feed. A uh, five gallon bucket with uh, rotifers. Uh, you want to change out 40% of the water every day. Other than that, you just need an airline tube and a heater in there. So you scoop out 40% of the water. Either put some of it in your main display tank if you want. It's good for that. It's got phytoplankton and a bunch of rotifers in it. Your fish will like it and your corals will like it. Um, let's see. You're gonna use. I use this RG Complete. You want to keep it in the refrigerator. I just have it out right now for this video. But uh, put like two milliliters of that in there twice a day. Once in the morning, once before I go to bed, and uh, seems to do all right. Some of the other basic equipment I got just airline tube and a piece of rigid airline tube on the end that I use as a vacuum. Just helps you get all the way to the bottom, and you can control it and keeps you from sucking up so many larvae when you do it. Water changes. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. Food, towels, sponge. I got a uh, cyclopes that I feed them, and this. Uh, New Life Spectrum pellets that I use the mortar and pestle to crush up into a powder so they can eat it. Other than that, brine shrimp net, magnifying glass so I can check up on them. All right, onto the tanks. All you need is a 10 gallon tank, small heater, thermometer. I got ammonia alert badges just so I could, you know, tell if something's getting out of control. I still do water tests uh, at least, at least every other day. I uh put marks on the tank at about every gallon so when I'm changing water I know depending on how much is in there that I can just take a gallon out and it'll be my 20 percent per day these are the latest batch on day seven I just started feeding them uh, the baby brine shrimp so I'm trying to get them used to that some of them are about to go through metamorphosis a couple of them have or are in the process of but uh, they're starting to get the orange bellies I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera but but uh, they are definitely figuring out how to eat baby brine shrimp and loving it so you don't need near as many baby brine shrimp as you do rotifers so like one brine shrimp is equal to 40 rotifers I believe so each larva needs about 25 a day to keep going but you got to put a bunch in there because they're not so great at catching them right off the bat and uh, air stone I put it underneath the heater so it dissipates the heat a little bit better and spreads it out the tank uh, you don't want to turn your heat, your air flow up this high until about four or five days. For the first couple, three days, you just want one little stream coming out. I lost a bunch of the second batch because I had it pumped up like that and they all got trapped in there and I found them just like piled up at the bottom of the air stone. So uh, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, over to this tank, which is uh, kind of the grow out tank right now. For the first two batches, I put them together at like 15 days just so I could make room for the little guys that were going to hatch. Anyway, you got some at 30 days today, I think, and the rest at 19. You can see uh, the big guys. I don't know if the camera's focusing on them or not, but uh, the tank's the same setup. Marked on the sides, a heater, an air stone. I added a piece of PVC elbow just for them to uh, have a place to hide out if they want to. Some of them like it, some of them don't. But, uh... I'll just leave it on here for a second. You can kind of see how many we got. There's a whole mess of them. Little clownfish circus going on in there. But uh, they definitely uh, are starting to act like little clownfish now. Getting territorial. Kind of pick fights with each other, but nothing too too bad. They say you can raise uh, like 50 to 100 in a 10-gallon tank, so I guess we're going to find out. All right. Well, if you got any questions, hit me up. Happy to try to answer them. Alright, see y'all.